Good evening, everyone. 431. We're going we're gonna, to uh, have one congregational hymn tonight, and uh, the rest of the evening will be for your enjoyment and uh, hopefully your encouragement. So if you could come on in, and we still have the front row completely available, all right? So... <clears throat> I can't spit that far, so y'all are welcome to move up. 431, 431, we'll be singing Silent Night to open it, and I know that it's a little dark in here. I picked one that you should be familiar with anyway. You can fake it. Um, we're not going to do any of our normal formalities this evening. This is all about Christ's birth. And so uh, I've been asked a number of times if we would take an offering up. And since it's Christmas and that would be for Christ, I think maybe we'll go ahead and do that part. Um, but, uh, yeah. All right. I think we got just about, just about everybody in place. I would like my, my, uh, my instruments to be close at hand. Um, and my singers to be close at hand, and don't wait for your, your special to get into your place, all right? Get into your place while I'm reading, while I'm talking. Um, that would be a good time to get in your place, okay? So 431, again, welcome. Glad that you visitors are with us tonight. Silent night. Let's sing together. Silent.
times didst give them all. In cloud and majesty and all, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Oh, drive away the shades of night and pierce the clouds and bring us light. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. to the old Israel. Amen. You are too kind, too kind indeed. Again, I want to encourage you, those of you who are singing and those of you who are playing instruments to be uh, in your place and ready to go uh, because this is going to go kind of quick and the reason is there's cookies in the other room. I'll just be honest. And so we want to get to the cookie part and the fellowship part. And uh, this is, this is a, a bonus. We really enjoyed the services this morning, the message, uh, and, uh, and so forth. So it is a blessing to be able to celebrate Christmas. Um, and all of the benefits of Christmas... And sometimes we don't think about that. Our, our human brains, I don't know, we can't contain um, all of that and all of the distractions of Christmas in our age. Um, and I've, I've read the Bible through, I read it through again this year, and I found, actually it's surprising what I didn't find, I didn't find any red suits and I didn't find any reindeer. I did find a lot of benefits and presents for us from what Christ has done and the fact that he did come. And this morning I preached on what if he hadn't come? Then what? We would be in a world of hurt for sure. But uh, I've got a list of blessings to share with you tonight. And I'm going I'm to make my comments very brief and we'll get right to the music um, and, uh, and the rejoicing there. But the first blessing that I want to share with you tonight before we have our first vocal from the Kiefer kids. So here you go. Because Jesus Christ came, we can know God. We can know God because Jesus Christ came. It tells us in our text, we were memorizing uh, for, uh, John chapter 1 as a church. And in verses 10 and 11, and again church, Feel free to jump in with me if you can do it. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Jesus Christ presented himself to us, and he was God. As he told Philip and the others, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We can know God because Jesus came, and if he hadn't, we wouldn't be able to. Uh-huh. All right.
people appreciate that let me give you blessing number two real quick and then we've got an instrumental special for you because Jesus came we can be called and we can become the sons of God in John chapter 1 again we're memorizing that verses 12 and 13 church if you can join with me but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What a blessing. We can become the sons of God. The young people are going to play God Rest You, Merry Gentlemen. Our young people bring their instruments and practice usually every, uh, after every evening service and sometimes before as well. That's quite a blessing. 
Speaking of blessings, let me give you a third blessing tonight. Because Jesus came, because we have Christmas that we're celebrating his birth, we can see God. And understand something, no man has ever laid eyes on God proper, if you will. But when Jesus came, he said that if you saw him, you saw God. And in our uh, in our scripture for the month, in fact, the verse we're memorizing this week in that is John 1, 14. Church, if you can, join with me. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, there's a lot of verses I could share at this point, but I promise not to preach. So uh, I'm going to share the blessings and then let you enjoy We three kings. Kings. Interesting, uh, interesting uh, couple of thoughts there, just to give you something to think about tonight. We sing Ray Three Kings, and we perceive, we, in our traditions and in our thought process, we think about three kings. When we get a nativity set, there comes three kings with them. But there's no biblical evidence that there was only three kings. There could have been 15 or 20. There might have been just two or two, or maybe there was three. We just don't know, and the Bible doesn't give us any uh, hard facts about that. We think maybe that that came about because of the three gifts, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but there's no evidence that there was only three kings to present them. Truth is, it could have just been, well, it had to have been plural because there was more than one, but uh, anyway, uh, that's interesting. And then also, uh, you might notice our three kings are over on the piano while Jesus is here on the nativity, uh, on the front. And uh, the reason for that is something else that you may or may not know. The kings didn't actually visit in the stable. That might be news to some of you. They came from afar, and when Jesus was born that night, his star appeared, and they came from afar. It would have taken them quite some time to get there, and so they likely never did make it to the stable. They visited him in a house. But that's neither here nor there. Um, It's a beautiful song, and we enjoy singing. Let me give you a fourth blessing tonight. Because Jesus came, because there is a Christmas, 
we can be freed from the bondage, from the shame, and from the penalty of our sin. If he hadn't come, as I preached this morning, we would never be able to have opportunity to do that. In fact, as we shared this morning, we wouldn't even know about our sin. It wouldn't be a full reality. Jesus presented that to us, told us about that, and then did miracles to prove that what he said was correct. And in answer to that, men just like you and I cried, crucify him, crucify him, because we didn't want our sins brought to light. Isn't that a sad truth? It is. But the blessing is because he did come and he did, he did die on the cross, he did rise from the day, uh, dead, and he did ascend back into heaven, we get a blessing out of that. Because he came, we can be freed from the bondage, shame, and penalty of our sin. John chapter 8, not of our text this month, but it says in verses 31 to 36, And Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them in verse 34, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever if the Son shall therefore make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We can be free from our sin, the penalty of our sin, the bondage of our sin, and the results of our sin. That's a blessing. What child is this? You might notice the young people changing their instruments around. They, uh, once they learn one, they tend to want to learn another one. And so uh, they, they, they work together. If you want to learn an instrument, Harlan Baptist Church, after an evening service, would be a great place to come. And you might learn more than one while you're at it. Uh, there's quite a few instruments uh, represented over there. The fifth blessing that I want to share with you before my young people come and sing for us again tonight is that because Jesus came... Not only are we free from the, the, the bondage of our sin, the penalty of our sin, and all of that, uh, we can be free from the chains of our past. Sometimes people get locked into who they once were, uh, or who their parents were, or where they came from. But because of Jesus Christ, he sets us free from that bondage as well. It's written in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? 
Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Now, let me pause there and just make a comment. If that, if we just stopped right there and there was no Christ, there would be a lot of room left in heaven. And hell would just be jam-packed. But the good news is, Jesus did come and he didn't stop there. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. Listen, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's because of Christmas, folks. That's, we, sir, we, we worship at Christmas. We come and celebrate Christ's birth at Christmas. He's not just a baby in a, craw, uh, in a, in a, uh, in a manger stall. And that's how we often seem, especially this time of year. But he is the Christ child. He is the Messiah. He is the Son of God and God the Son who came to forgive and set us free from our sin and the bondage of our sin and from being locked and chained into our past and who we once were. I thank God that I'm not bound by who I once was or by who my ancestors were either. So, young people are going to come and sing one of my favorite songs that they sing, Isn't It Amazing?
Isn't it amazing to think that God would allow his son to be born and laid in a manger amongst the cattle, amongst the sheep, amongst the other animals there? God wrapped in flesh just for me. That's amazing. Because he came, we can have our eyes opened to the truth. For years I lived my life thinking that I was a good person, that I was okay um, morally, and one day through the preaching, through the teaching of God's Word, my eyes became opened to the fact that, oh, I might be a good person when I compare myself to somebody else, but when I really look at the standard, and that is Jesus Christ, I fall woefully short of where I should have been. And he came, Jesus came to open our eyes to that as I preached this morning. In 2 Corinthians, we're told in chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan doesn't want people to have understanding. Satan doesn't want people to be able to see the truth about God or about themselves. And that's why there's so many distractions in the world. That's why the world is such a messed up place today. But Christ came to open our eyes. If he hadn't come, we wouldn't be able to see, we wouldn't be able to understand. But because he did, we can do both. Young people are going to play O Come, o Come Emmanuel on their instruments for you. That's get your blood pumping, get you excited. And that cello and that piano work very nicely together. You did a wonderful job, girls. The seventh blessing that I want to share with you uh, this evening, and the last one that I'll share with you as well tonight. <clears throat> Again, I could have went on for hours. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Because he came... we can break free from the pull and the power of the world's influence. Most of you will likely be able to identify, would likely agree, I would under expect, that 
the world around us is falling apart, coming apart at the seams. And if you just looked out into the world and said, wow, this is quite the, the, the elaborate mess, the complicated mess that we have, it might seem that there is no escape. But the good news, as I shared this morning, is Jesus said if he, he was going to prepare a place, and if he went to prepare a place, he would come again to receive us, that where, we, where he is, there we might be also. Of course, if we've believed on his name, if we've called on him for salvation, if we've trusted in him to be our Savior, which he came, which the angel said to Mary that he would be, and he's also said to Joseph, he also said that to the, to the uh, shepherds out in the fields, um, there is hope. And we can break free. We don't have to the march to the beat of their drummer. We don't have to follow uh, in their footsteps. We don't have to be trapped by the world that we live in. In spite of the fact that when Christ saved me, he didn't take me directly out, which was a disappointment. Um, he did leave me here, but he left me here and said, go tell everybody else the good news that I came to save I came to save from sin. I came to save from self. Um, spread the gospel to every creature far and wide. In the, gospel, in the first, uh, uh, first John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? I want to encourage you this Christmas. Jesus came for all of these and many more. Uh, of course, all of them are contained in the Bible, in his Holy Scripture that he left us. And by the way, in John 1, it tells us in verse 1 that he was the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus came to set us free. He came to give us hope and give us a way out, to help us to understand that we are not trapped by the world. We're not trapped by our sin. We're not trapped by our past. But that he came as our Savior, and he will come back to receive us to himself. That one day we can have hope that we will spend eternity with him in heaven, away from all this disaster, away from all this mess. And... Um, that's what Jesus did for you on Christmas. And uh, my, my encouragement, my, my plea, is that you put your faith and trust in Him. Not in yourself, not in your goodness. Not to discourage you, but there's just not a whole lot there. But in His goodness, because He is infinitely good. And He is a Savior that came to rescue us from our sin. So put your faith and trust in him. I have two more specials for you tonight, two more songs. Uh, the first one, the young people are going to come and sing for us again. Do you have room? Um, in this world, we are preoccupied, we are jam-packed, and, and, you know, all of the conveniences that we've come up with in the last 2,000 years, right? We're not riding horses, we're not walking in sandals, we're not, you know... Uh, we have cars with air conditioning, buildings and chairs with air conditioning, right? Uh, we've come a long way. We've got smartphones. We, we don't have to, you know, walk to give a message or uh, send a message. We can call people, text people, Facebook people, whatever. And yet, in spite of all of the conveniences, we seem to have not very much time left for God, who created us, who sent his son to die for us, who, who sent his son on Christmas to be born for us so that we could be offered salvation and be freed from our sin. And I want to encourage you tonight. If you don't have or haven't had room in your life for the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, for his church which he died for, make room. As I shared with people this morning, it doesn't happen by accident. It's not just going to fall on you. You're going to have to say, nope, this is important to me, and we're going to do this. We're getting ready to start a new year, a new opportunity. 
Out in the foyer, uh, on the left, on the welcome booth, you will find these Bible reading schedules. One is chronological. The one that will be on your left is reading through the Bible as the events took place. The other one is just a standard Genesis 1-1 all the way through Revelation, read your Bible in a year. And that sounds complicated. It sounds like, man, that would take a lot of time. I suspect the average reader probably won't take more than 15 minutes a day to read through the Bible in a year. I think it'd be a worthwhile thing. That before Jesus got back, we read his book at least once. The kids are going to come and sing for you, Do You Have Any Room? And then the instrumentalists are going to follow that up and close the service tonight with, Oh, come, all ye faithful.
Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. They've been working hard for quite some time to, to put that all together, and I hope that it was a blessing to you. We have prepared some snacks, a lot of cookies, a little bit of milk, some coffee back there, other refreshments that you might find, and uh, we hope that you'll stick around. Visitors, thank you for coming tonight. I, you probably came to listen to one of these young people and, uh, and see what was going on there, and I hope that that was a blessing. But uh, I hope you'll consider coming back to join with us. Uh, we're just a small church who is very serious about living for God to the very best of our ability, teaching the Word of God the very best of our ability, and uh, being serious about living in this world but not of this world. That's our goal as a church. And so uh, we memorize scriptures uh, every month, and we uh, listen to the preaching and uh, study our Bibles, read our Bibles, and we're just trying to be Christians in the here and now and uh, living for Jesus and telling other people about him. So we hope that you will consider coming back. But that concludes our service for tonight. So uh, they're going to turn some lighting on in the other room so don't blind us when we get over there. But thank you for coming. Let me have a word of prayer with you before you leave. Father, I want to thank you for these that have gathered tonight, the young people and their hard work in presenting the the uh, music that they did, and Father, the encouragement that it was to us. But more than any of that, uh, Father, even the refreshments that will be now received, and we do ask for your blessing there. But Father, more than any of those things, we're thankful for tonight, tonight for the Lord Jesus Christ, for all that he did, for the things that were mentioned, and for the many, many, many more that were not mentioned tonight, the things that we're now able to have and to do and to be a part of because of him coming. Father, for what he helped us to get out of uh, and um, for the opportunities that he afforded us through his life, through his living, through his death. And uh, Father, we, we thank you for all of that and ask for your blessing on our time together, the remaining time, the fellowship, the refreshments. And uh, Father, we thank you and pray that you bless our visitors tonight. So grateful that they spent the evening with us in Jesus' name. Amen.